Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Hope everybody is doing great today. That's my prayer for you. Um, come on in, invite someone as best you can to join us uh, this evening for this discussion um, that I want to have. Oh my goodness, what am I looking for? Um, if this is your first time here, I'm R.C. Blakes and uh, this is my platform and I, I spend a lot of my time empowering women. I go, I travel the country and even abroad teaching women um, self-empowerment. You know, so many women are struggling with broken consciousness and are looking for someone or something outside of themselves to define them and uh, to give them validity when the reality is that uh, self-esteem comes from one's God and from within one's self. And so that's, that's my mission. This is, this is um, my most popular book, Queenology, that women are reading all around the world. Every day I get messages from around the world relative to how this book is changing the mindset of women. That book and the book Queenology. Just recently, um, I dropped the male equivalent, Kingology, where we're dealing with the psychology of the man. And it's amazing to me, the weaver, thank you so much. It's amazing to me how many men are tuning in uh, to my YouTube channel, even though I, I mostly deal with women's issues, men um, extract the lessons from it and it improves the quality of their manhood from the inside out. I will be dealing with specifically kingology and issues relative to men and the vision is to merge the two because when we have a healthy king and a healthy queen we can then create a great kingdom. But tonight I want to look at something that uh, it, I think it, it it spins off from my most popular upload, um, which is uh, seven things a queen conscious woman never does with a man. Um, seven things a woman should never do when dating. Seven things a woman should never do when dating. I don't have a lot of um, text here, so this may not be so long but stick with me. And if you have something to write with, get it, get it now. Seven things a woman should never do when dating. Now, the first thing you have to understand is that the purpose of dating is to gather data. That's what I always teach. The purpose of dating is to gather data. The purpose of dating is not to have sex. That's broken consciousness. That's female slave conditioning. If you're still a woman and you believe that the purpose of dating is for you to go lay down in a bed with a man that you're not married to and a man that's not committed to you and has no real ties to you other than getting ready to create a soul tie, you really need to sit here and listen to what I have to talk about. Dating is not, is not about having sex. It's not for you to have sex. The purpose of dating is to gather data gather the information. And in the process of gathering the information, it's almost kind of, it's almost kind of like uh, testing for COVID-19, the pandemic that we're presently in here in 2020. Uh, when people test you, they have all kinds of precautions to make certain that as they gather the data they are not infected by something you may be carrying. And so it is with, with a woman and, and the dating process. You have to control the environment. You have to control the experience. You have to control the experiment that you're, you don't contract something that this brother might be carrying because it is a very volatile and dangerous exercise to begin to crack the door of your life and to potentially let someone else in. 
So queen conscious women do not date randomly. Queen conscious women do not date foolishly. But queen conscious women date intentionally. And in the process of dating intentionally, there, there, there are these seven things that I have pulled. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, just to lay some foundation and to allow some others to come in. In 2 Corinthians 6 and 14, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion does light have with darkness? But he says, don't be unequally yoked together. Don't be unequally yoked together. In other words, don't tie your life to someone that does not fit your future. Because, okay, listen to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 22 and 10. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass. They have two different temperaments. Uh, different kinds of abilities, different strengths. So you don't yoke them together. You don't tie them together because neither of them can help the future of the other. And when you start talking about yoking uh, animals together, in that sense, you're talking about Manthes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're talking about the two coming together for the purpose of productivity. You didn't just yoke animals together just to say, okay, they're yoked. Look at them. Aren't they a cute couple? Look at those two bulls over there. Look at those two donkeys over there yoked. Aren't they a cute couple? No, no. You don't yoke beasts together for the purposes of optics. You yoke beasts together for the purposes of productivity. And so if, if that is true on the, on the base level of yoking animals together, how much more should there be an intentional purpose for productivity when one ties his or her life to another? But how many of us, how many of us are dating with, with um, productivity nowhere in mind? You're dating for the purposes, of, again, I say, of sex. You're, you're, dating, for the, you're, you're dating for the purposes of Instagram photos, uh, you're dating because your, your girl, your best bestie got married and now you just want a man. It doesn't even matter if he's a piece of man or half a man. You just want something that resembles a man. And there's no concern for, is this going to be productive? See, I say to, I say to, to, to people all of the time, you should always date a person, or should I say, take a person seriously. Queen, I know who I am. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I like that name. Queen, I know who I am. Lily, thank you, Pastor, for your time. You're truly a father to us all. May the Most High continue to bless your ministry. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Okay, let's see something here. Uh, I say to people all the time, you should marry for your future. That's a lot of the reason you're going to need to date intentionally. And that's, that's a lot of the reason you're going to need all of the data. Level up mind, level up mind, body and beauty. Been celibate for 19 months and until marriage. Only interested in the soulmate God has for me, single and waiting on God. And that's what I'm talking about. Let me make sure this thing is not going to fall. That's exactly what I'm talking about. See, that's a mindset. That's a queen consciousness. That, that makes me happy. But you should marry for your future. Marry someone that fits your future. Now, how does that work? You have to, first of all, my dear, take the time, slow your happy self down. Take the time to figure out who you are and where you're going. There are so many of you that got thrown into the rat race because society says to you, if you don't have a man by such and such an age, something's wrong with you. And that's a bad look. I say it's a bad look to waste your entire life with somebody that should have never gotten a conversation with you. 
but you don't know what man will fit your future until you visit your future, until you as a woman figure out where you're going, who you are, and understand that your identity is not tied into. Listen to what I'm saying. Your identity is not tied into some relationship with a man. Your identity is tied into your relationship with the creator and self-awareness. But how many of you are out here in these situationships dating and you have no clue relative to who you are or where you're going? This is why you keep choosing people that break you down. It's like going into a shoe store, buying shoes and don't know your size. That's a good illustration there. Can you imagine how painful that is to go into a shoe store and buy shoes and don't know your size? In fact, about it, you have to know even what size you wear in certain brands. If not, it's going to be a very difficult and uncomfortable experience when you don't know who you are and where you're going and you keep making these, keep having these dating experiences, it always ends in pain. So let me jump in. I've, I've, I've prolonged it enough. Number one, number one, seven things a queen conscious woman will never do, should never do when dating. Number one. Never invest in a man's business idea. Never invest in a man's business idea. This is one of the biggest games running. Man get there and he pretend to be uh, print, you know, knight in shining armor. Mm-hmm. Talk all that good talk. About how, you know, he, he, he going to make seven figures uh, in 2021. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, talking all that big talk. You know, what school he went to and how smart he is. And then you, you work around and, you know, maybe a week or so, two weeks. The next thing you know, he's telling you, he's selling you on this big idea he got. This big business idea he got. Oh, man. And I'm, I'm just, you know. I'm just a couple G's short. I'm a couple grand short. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. See, when you are when you are a very successful woman, especially, and it's clear that you make a lot of money, you will attract a lot of this. And as a woman, when dating, you should never allow a man to talk you into investing in his business idea. I don't care uh, what kind of percentages he's promising you. No, a man that needs you to invest in his dream is suspect. He just met you and he needs you to invest in his dream. He's suspect. And the reason I say he's suspect is because in most of those cases, he is looking at you as nothing but a check. Now, you have sex with you and all of that. Thank you, Megan. Uh, hey, spiritual dad, I'm so glad God gave me revelation of the truth through you. What a true blessing you are to all of us. Thank you so much. Um, you're nothing but a check. Now he'll go through all the process of having sex with you and talking all that good talk. And, you know, and the next thing you know, he's trying to, he's trying to strong arm you into investing in his so-called business idea. Let me read this. A man that has the kind of character to sustain you will never run the risk of impressing you that he's in, in it for anything other than your affections. In other words, if he meant right, he would find somewhere else to go to borrow that money. If a man really wants to win a woman's heart and wants her to see him as her man and, and the potential covering for her life, he ain't going to open up the relationship with throwing her no business proposition. He, he's not going to open up the relationship with, can you invest in my business? It's going to be a seven figure deal and all of this kind of thing because he, do, he doesn't want to, he doesn't want her to misunderstand. So he would rather watch this go elsewhere, he would even rather let that deal fall through to solidify the relationship 
rather than impress her the wrong way. Never, never. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 5 and 8, but if any, any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel or an unbeliever. Uh, in other words, the fundamental character and nature of a man that really loves a woman and sees a woman as wife material is that he wants to impress that woman that he's there to cover her. He's not he's not coming into the relationship, um, you know, asking her to cover him. Never, especially when you when you're a woman that uh, you got a business that's working you highly educated. They can pretty much deduce from the job you have that you make X amount of dollars. And then here you are, you know, two weeks, a month into the relationship and homeboy talking about he got a business proposition for you. He ain't supposed to ever hear from you again. Queens never invest in a new man's so-called dream. Now that's your husband. Your husband got a dream and you got the means to support him and he's proven in your life. Y'all rock together to become one. But some dude just showed up here to my, you know, uh -uh. y'all dating and all of this kind of stuff. Uh -uh. Maybe y'all messed up and had sex and all this kind of thing. And now he talking about a business proposition. You got to be smarter than that. And too many of y'all doing this, giving these people this money, man, investing in these so-called businesses. And once they get that money, you can't even hear from them no more. You can't you can't find enough lawyers to find those jokers. Number two, never, queens never give a man a vision. Queens never give a man a vision. Thank you, Robin. You're a father to so many of us, and I'm thankful that you helped me leave a narcissist relationship. Now I'm re rebuilding my life with God. Thank you so much. God bless you, and I'm going to I'm going to be here to celebrate with you as God continues to do great things in your life. Never, queens never give a man a vision. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, many times, sometimes, or many times, a woman that lacks queen consciousness becomes so desperate for a man that she takes a little man that has no vision at all. It's clear that this little man has no vision. This little dude ain't got no vision. And what she does is she tries to transplant a vision into him. You can't give a man a vision. Any man that requires you to give him a vision is not qualified to lead you anywhere but to the bed or the bank. Let me read that one more time in case you missed it. Any man that requires a woman to give him a vision is not qualified to lead the woman anywhere but to the bed or the bank. Here you a visionary woman, you have all of these goals, you have aspirations and ambitions, and you got this little man that's just looking good and just as empty between his ears, and he has no vision, no concept of, of, a, of a, you know, a preferred future. Thank you, Donetta. Awesome teaching. Your teaching changed my life at the age of 49. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you for, for sharing that with me. You can't give no man no vision. There's some of y'all right now. Got a little man and you're trying, to, you're trying to encourage him. You're trying to motivate him. Dude ain't had no vision when you met him. And he still ain't got no vision. And see, now you, you didn't took all the little Instagram pictures and, and, and all this kind of thing. And you didn't change your little profile. And you, you, maybe y'all even talking about getting married. But now you're realizing that you're going to need more than a strong arm and a strong jaw. Antoinette, thank you so much. To sustain you as a visionary woman, you're going to need a man with a vision. You, 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 you're not going to be comfortable as a woman. You're not going to be comfortable with a man that you always got to tell him where we're going and how we're going to get there. You think you're going to be comfortable with that? You think you're going to be able to live with that? See, because sex don't last. You would know, be lying, bragging to about half hour, hour. That's a lie. About three minutes. And once those three minutes over, 
how is dude going to keep you engaged? How is he going to keep you excited about the relationship if he's satisfied where you are? You reaching for the penthouse and homeboy's satisfied with the basement because he has no vision. And you thought you could give him one. You thought that you could take him and bring him and put a little suit on him and dress your little man up. And that all of a sudden he was going to have ambition. Dude ain't got no ambition. His highest ambition was to find a woman like you that would take care of him so that he wouldn't have to think about nothing else for the rest of his life. Queens do not invest themselves into men that they have to give vision to. Queens ask questions that only kings can answer. And one of the, queen, one of the questions that queens will ask is, where are you going? How do I fit into it? How are you going to get there? If Duke can't answer that, homegirl ain't going to waste no more time with him. But, you know, y'all just popping his gum to my, he cute, he fine, he got muscles like uh, Chestnut and all this kind of stuff, Morris, Boris, Morris, whatever the boy name, y'all know what I'm talking about. You, 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 you caught up on that trip, but the reality is dude ain't got no vision. And, and listen to me, the thing that's going to be attractive about a man when you and he become old is his vision. A real man comes with a vision included. You don't have to give a real man a vision. Wow. If a woman has to give a man a vision, he's not her man. He's more like her son. Sometimes um, a woman can see more of a future for a man than he can see for himself. And listen, listen to me very well. When you can see more for a dude than he can see for himself, run, Forrest, run. That's going to get old. That's going to get old. When Eve showed up on the scene, we go back to the Bible, we go back to the book of Genesis. When Eve showed up on the scene, Adam already had a vision. He had a job. He had a house. Come on now. He was balling and shot calling. She didn't have to show up to give Adam no vision. Adam had already gotten that from God. So queens do not invest themselves into men that they have to give a vision to. Well, you, you know, you constantly complaining with your girlfriends uh, that highly valued life. Thank you, Rev, for the lessons and the blessings. Thank you. I appreciate you. You on the phone constantly complaining with your girlfriends about how this dude, you know, he has no drive, no ambition. Have y'all ever heard that? Raise your hand if you ever heard that. I heard what your girlfriend said, the dude ain't got no drive. It's, it's a turn off. He ain't got no vision. He got so much potential. I told y'all in the first one that I did two years ago. Seven things a queen conscious woman never does with a man. When, queens don't marry potential. Queens looking for fruit. They, queens ain't concerned about your potential. They want to know what are you, what are you producing? See, because if you are producing, you can produce more. But if you ain't producing, chances are you will never produce anything. And so, and so if I got to give you a vision, mm -mm. how am I going to give you a vision and then submit to you as a husband or the head of my house? How am I going to give you a vision and then trust you to lead me? The Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 18, if people, uh, and I think this is the message Bible version, uh, Taj the Great One, please preach. Women can't appreciate nor respect a male like this. That's where a lot of domestic violence stems from. He feels inadequate. Absolutely. And that's what happens eventually. He begins to resent the woman because she married outside of her level. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, if people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves, but when they attend to what he reveals, they're most blessed. If a man has no vision of what God is doing, he makes a mess out of everything. Bridget, thank you. Hi, Pastor, this is spot on. Was dating a deacon and gathering information and my intuition and God exposed him for the broken, <laughs> busted scammer he was. I'm celibate for one and a half, one, 1. 1.5 years and will wait on God. That's amazing. She called homie broken, busted. Oh, Lord Jesus. OK, so number one, we said Queens never invest in a man's business idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. You ain't supposed to invest in no man's idea but your husband's. And y'all got to be in the right place. Number two, 
Never give a, queens never give a man a vision. Hope y'all understood what that means. Number three, queens are never a man's secret. <sighs> Let me see. Nikamaya Lewis, I think I said it right. Thank you, Pastor. You are always right on time. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Number three, queens are never a man's secret. A man will never fool trick a queen into living on the down low because secrets are shady. Man, you, go, ah, you know, I, I just have my certain time. I don't want people in my business. You, you don't want people in your business, but you want to be all up in. Hmm. Queens never submit to being a man's secret. Mm -mm. Queens are not going to be the no, 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 no secret lover. There was a song they used to have. Secret lover. That's what we do. No, that ain't what we do. Mm -mm. That ain't what we do. Not a queen. Queens, queens are not going to be a man's secret, and kings don't want their queens kept in secret. Kings actually build a rise to put a throne on so his queen can sit next to him. Any clown that want to keep you a secret is exactly that, a clown. You know, well, you know, don't, don't, don't post that. Don't, I, don't, I don't want people all up in my business. No, you don't want your other woman to see. See, queens are smarter than that. You don't want your other woman to see that you are with me. You ain't gonna give me this, this BS about your, you, you know, you, you ain't got no business. You broke? What kind of business you got? You ain't got no business. Thank you, Shana. And, and, and some of y'all, they talking you into just keeping the sin. Just be, just be, just be, just be hush, hush about, you know, let's fly. Let's fly under the radar. Let's fly under the radar. No, let's fly right into the camera. Let's fly right into the camera. Yeah, uh-uh. That's disrespectful for a man to tell you to keep a relationship secret. Mm-mm. That's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. Disrespectful. Disrespectful, Teresa. Thank you. That's disrespectful. Don't know. Don't know. No, no. A queen is not going to allow a man to take and talk her into living some secret life. Here you all up in the house, sleeping with the woman, got the woman cooking your food. Keep down low. Uh -uh. No, indeed. No, indeed. John 3 and 19 puts it this way. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds were evil. Anybody that wants to keep secrets is illegal or immoral. Anybody that wants to keep secrets is either illegal or immoral. And I don't care what kind of lie. This, I don't care what kind of lie this dude has told you. If dude is trying to keep you a secret, he's either illegal or immoral. And you have to value yourself above being some inferior man's secret. Okay, praise the Lord. Number four, I have seven. Queens never get swept away with sexual um, advances, I guess I would say. Yeah, queens never get swept away with sexual advances, because one of the tricks of, of perverted male society is called flattery. Flattery. And see, women are built, women are built to respond to certain kinds of words. And when dude is saying all of the right stuff and telling you how beautiful you are, well, of course that impacts uh, a woman, you know, that moves a woman on a certain level. But queens uh, vet every word that comes out of a man's mouth. Queens, I'll say it again, 
vet every word that comes out of a man's mouth. Thank you, Sonia. Thank you for your godly wisdom and instruction. It has helped me more than I could ever tell you. Be blessed. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate you. Every woman is moved by, by beautiful words, but the difference between an average woman and a queen conscious woman is that queens vet every word that comes out of a man's mouth. So he'll say certain things and she'll hear it and she may feel it, but she vets it. She, 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 uh, she takes her time because then those words begin to turn what? Sexual. Have you ever noticed whenever they give you uh, this, this long list of compliments it's not long after that the conversation begins to turn sexual. You know, it begins to he begins to describe your your physique in certain ways. And that may to some extent be flattering if he's if he has any kind of class at all about himself. But you'll notice that it goes from flattery to the conversation becoming sexual. And with an average woman, he will set up for the okie doke. And by the time he shifts the conversation sexually, she's gone. You know, she fainted. She gone. She is 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 done. By the time she come back to, they got three babies, and you know, never even had a wedding. But here's one of the things you got to remember: the wrong man. Now listen to this very carefully, and I speak this to you as I would speak this to one of my biological daughters. Forgive me for drinking this water, but um, I'm thirsty. The wrong man will often be the best sex. That's why it's important for you to, to maintain your, um, yourselves sexually and abstain because the wrong man, most of the time, will be the best sex. There's something demonic about it, but the wrong man will be the best sex. But queens never get swept up or swept away with these sexual advances. Listen to what the Bible says in James 1, 14 and 15. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it brings forth sin and sin when it is finished brings forth death. There's a reason that the wrong man pushes so hard to get you into a sexual position. Sex is the original drug. It's like a, an hallucinogenic. It makes you believe things that are not real. It makes you see stuff that's not even there. And then the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 6 and 7, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away, led away with divers of many different kinds of lust, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because that sex is like a drug. Queens don't fall for that. Queens understand what's at risk. When you, when you lay your body down in a bed, you understand that your soul is present. And sometimes you got psychological locks that won't allow you to let release a man that's proven to be no good because there's a sexual tie. You'd be amazed at how many men are controlling great women through sexual means. There's more to this thing, man, and he, he cute and he flirted and he, he, he called me fine and he described my body in a way like I never heard it described before. And, 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 and I tell you what, child, he know what he doing. He between the sheets. He ain't only between the sheets, he between your ears too. Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you for being such an amazing spiritual father through you and Lady Lisa. I'm healing from such a deep level of brokenness and trauma. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. And I love you. He only between he only he ain't only between the sheets, babe. He between your ears. See, queens understand this. He, 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 he ain't only between the sheets, he between your ears. And long after he gone, he'll be living between your ears. We call it a soul tie. I, I got a book around here somewhere. Breaking the ties that bind. Soul ties. 
Number five, queens never expose themselves emotionally to a new man. Queens, number five, never expose themselves emotionally to a new man. Mm -mm. I'm really sorry. I'm, I, I'm sorry for drinking this water on me like that. Queens never expose themselves emotionally to a new man. Taj the great one, Lord, he fulfilled all my lustful places. Once I got away from him, I saw the truth. That's the way it happens. That's the way it happens. Now, let's, let's look at this in number five. Queens never expose themselves emotionally to a new man. Um, listen, when you're trying to get to know a man and figure a dude out, uh, you're not supposed to be having no, no breakdowns over no new man in front of a new man. If you, if you that, if you are that carried away with this dude, you're supposed to go find your best friend or your mama to have your breakdown. Worst thing in the world you can do is to be exposing yourself emotionally to, to dude you do not know. Because you have to understand something. Predators are pushing buttons to intentionally produce emotion so that they can tell where you are emotionally so that they know exactly what kind of strategy to use on you. So you got to almost be like a dude. You know how a dude reserves his emotion and you don't know where he's at? Uh, a queen can sit down in a, in a new relationship and dude will never be able to figure out where she's at. Her heart may be completely broken, but dude will never know it. You cannot afford to expose yourself emotionally to a person you do not know. This is why the Bible says in 1 John 4 and 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the earth. Thank you, Lisa. Queens need more than words and we oui, we. Oui. <laughs> Thank you for your teachings. Dodging all liabilities, you are saving more women than you will ever know. Bless you. Thank you so much, Lisa. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lord have mercy. First John 4 and 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Wonder bread. 152, thank you so much. He says, because many false prophets, listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. You're not supposed to expose yourself emotionally. Do you, do you, do you not understand that the most intimate thing you can give a person is the full expression of your raw emotion? Everybody does not deserve that. Everybody, there are very few people in life who are safe enough to even be able to handle that. And, and you cannot afford to take a man you don't know and allow him to experience. I don't know if I'm making sense here. So number five, never expose yourself emotionally to a new man. Number six. Never cancel. And this is a big one right here. Ooh. About to drink that water again. Number six, never, can never cancel your plans for man last minute. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. This is like the icing for session seven of the Queenology study guide that I completed yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting me. Number six. Never cancel your plans for a man last minute. In other words, no, no dude is supposed to, no dude can call a queen uh, at five o'clock and say, oh, oh, can, I, can I get you for seven? And you already have plans and you cancel your plans. Now, you know, you, you got to weigh this based on every situation, but if dude making a habit of calling you last minute, thank you, Lynn. And every time he call you last minute, um, you changing what you had planned to accommodate dude and dude ain't got no ring on your finger. You know, dude has made no commitments to you and you just keep on canceling 
your life to accommodate him when he feel like he got space and time for you. Uh -uh. That ain't the way that work. That ain't the way that's disrespectful. See, as a woman, you have to understand it's in the dating process. You are teaching a man how to respect you. You are teaching a man how to respect you. And how do you teach a man how to respect you? By the way you respect yourself. What you stand for tells me how you respect yourself. And I will push you to the extent that I know you ain't going to take it no more. A man's use of time, listen to this very carefully. A man's use of time determines his priorities. If he always calling you last minute, it's mean, it means that he's thinking about you last. Let me say that one more time. Ms. TDW, thank you. You're a true blessing, Bishop. Thank you. And sending love to Lady Lisa. Thank you so much. If he's always calling you last minute, it means that he's always thinking about you last. Anytime a man really values you and sees you in the light that he should see you in, he'll call you Sunday to make plans for a date Saturday. A man's use of time determines his priority. Anything that will allow a man to neglect it let me see here. True Despina. Thank you. Take care of yourself, sir. Drink your water. Don't be sorry. We appreciate your time. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Happy belated Father's Day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. On that note, I'm going to drink me some more. Praise the Lord. Let's see something here. Margarita, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Now, listen. Now let me read this statement, and I want you all to hear this. Never make a man feel that he is your priority before he has clearly made you his. See, if I can keep calling you at the last second, I now know I'm your priority. But I've not proven to you that you're mine. Never make a man feel that he is your priority before he has made you his priority. Chanel Rose, thank you for sharing your wisdom. It's much appreciated. Thank you, Chanel. I appreciate you. Listen to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 24 and 5, and I'm almost done. It says, when a man hath taken a new wife. Listen, listen, listen to what the Bible says now. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war Neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife. Learn how to make his woman happy, which he hath taken. Ms. Audi uh, 41. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bishop, for stepping in where my father should have 45 years ago. You are truly a blessing to my life and the lives of many others. Thank you, I appreciate your words. Your words mean the world to me. But listen to what the text says. The text says uh, a man that takes a wife is gonna have no, no warfare for him, uh, don't even do any business. Shalanda, thank you so much, but stay at home for one year and learn how to make his wife happy. Because when a man really cares for you, He's never, going to, he's never going to call you last minute. You're going to clearly be his priority in the way he uses his time. Like there's some of you that have dudes on your hands now that you almost have to beg for dude's time. You, you, you're not supposed to settle for that. You're not supposed to settle for that. Ain't no queen sitting around begging no man for his time. No, 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 no. And then when, then when dude makes the time... You changing all of your schedule. You know, you, you done harassed your girlfriends all week long crying about how dude never shows up and he never uh, really makes you priority. And now your girlfriend bought tickets for a concert and y'all supposed to go out. Then dude called it last minute. And then you change. I can't go, girl. Come on now. That's female slave conditioning working right there. That's female slave conditioning working right there. No, no, no. You don't let nobody disrespect you like that. You supposed to tell dude, no, well, you know, it been nice, but... I already got plans. I already got plans. 
Das, das. I hope I'm saying it right. Thank you. Already have plans. You should have called me earlier. Why didn't you call me earlier? Blah, blah, blah. And let him get mad. Let him get mad. This is disrespectful. You, you, no, you don't call anybody last minute, last second, all the time and think that they're going to always be there. It's as if you're saying your life is mine. Just, just be there when I need you and do what I tell you to do. That's female slave conditioning. And when you get to a point where you become strong enough as a woman that you don't mind losing this dude and you say, that's unacceptable. I'm not dealing. I'm going out with my girlfriends tonight. I'll catch you next week sometime and don't care how you feel about it. See, when you when you come out of that vein, now you become an attractive to kings. Because kings love women who have boundaries. See, I already know that woman I got in there. It's only so far I can go. It ain't, you know, it ain't gonna, it's not just not acceptable. It ain't going to be tolerated. Uh, it's just not. And see, that's one of the things I love about her. I, that's one of the things I love most about her. Thank you, V. Celibate, single, over a decade, not dating, great teaching. Heard a pastor recently say dating a preacher should be private. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. There's something right about that. All right. Laura Lee, thank you for being a blessing. Thank you. India, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. I love you. But never cancel your plans for a man last minute. Mm -mm. Then number seven and finally, do not shrink your profile to accommodate his intimidation. Queens do not shrink their profile to accommodate an inferior man's intimidation. She said, I can drink it, so I'm going to drink it. Messing all the professionalism on my video up. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Whew, can't get that ghetto out, man. Alicia, thank you. Thank you. I listen to your videos every night. You are speaking truth. We need this. Be blessed. Thank you so much, Alicia. Number seven, and finally, do not shrink your profile to accommodate his intimidation. See, number one, when you start looking at a situation where you have to begin to miniaturize yourself to be able to fit into this dude's world, you automatically know this ain't it. This ain't it. But then what happens is, you know, society says, well, you know, you 30 years old now, you 35, you 40, you 45, you 50 years old, you 55, you need a man. You don't know when you're going to have this chance again. So what you do is you shrink yourself when you're not queen conscious. You shrink yourself to fit into this man's little world. Now, the problem is he's fully extended, so he's comfortable at this level, but you are compressed. All your back hurting, your knees, your neck. Because it, it was uncomfortable for you to even fit into such a small space. Thank you, Michelle. And now you got to try to figure out how you're going to live a lifetime in this position. It's not natural. Wasn't designed to be. Unequally yoked. You have shrunken yourself to accommodate his intimidation because every time he look at you and you shining in your full glory, you can tell that something happens. Uh, Mick and honey woman. Thank you for this teaching. Thank you. Milk and honey woman. Thank you. These glasses are not working that well. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. Don't shrink your, don't shrink your profile to accommodate his intimidation. You start seeing a little man intimidated. It's time, time to move on. Let him go. Put him in the friend zone. Thank you, Chanel. Thank you, Pastor, for your instruction and love. I've been listening one and a half years and have internalized and put into practice your teachings in all of my relationships. Loving God and loving me. Bless you. Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Now, let me read this and then I'm out. Do not shrink your profile to accommodate his intimidation. 
I was, I was thinking the other day about the spirit of violence and murder. And, you know, biblically, when did we first see this? And it was between Cain and Abel. And the Bible says in Genesis 4, 4 through 7 says, And Abel, he also brought of the first things of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. You could see it on his face, in other words. And the Lord said unto Cain, why art thou wroth? Why, why art thou angry? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. I want to just share what are my thoughts on that. Queen, I know who I am. Laugh a lot. We need a part two t <laughs> tomorrow night. Uh, Nini, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. I appreciate you. So we see here between Cain and Abel that one brother got intimidated by the accomplishment, for lack of another term, of the other brother. And then God says, if you do the same thing your brother did, you'd be accepted as well. But he chose to hate his brother to the point that he actually killed him rather than expand himself or level up. When you see a man that can be in your presence, Ms. A, thank you. Where can I meet a quality gentleman? Online dating hasn't worked for me and is depressing. I want to have a husband, family of my own. I don't know. I got to, you know, we got to pray about that. We got to pray about that. Hallelujah. I'm believing that God will send the right man into your world. That's my prayer, that God will send and put the right man into your life. But when you look at Genesis 4, 4 through 7, he hated on his brother. But God said, you have the opportunity to do the same thing. When you see a man that is intimidated by your success or by your strength, that lets you know a few things. He thinks poorly of himself. He's not enough man for you and that he's unpredictable. So the best thing for you to do when you find a little man that's intimidated by you is to let him move on and you move on with your life and marry yourself to your vision. Everybody's trying to, you know, um, get a relationship and I feel it. I feel, you know, I'm married and I love being married. I need to be married, be quite honest with you. M Ms. Pia, 1980, I'm broken in tears, need healing. Hope not too late at 40. Girl, 40, you still a baby. Just getting started. Just getting started. I want you to reach out to me on my, at my email, pastorrcblakes at gmail.com. Put something bold in the heading, all caps, so I can know it's you from, from YouTube. Um, you do not shrink yourself to accommodate a man that's intimidated by you. Marry your vision. Don't, don't pursue a relationship with a man to the point that you would abort the vision that God has put in you. Thank you, Jess. You are helping me to stay strong and wait for better instead of settling. Exactly. Don't become so consumed with the idea of having a man in your life that you divorce the vision that God has put in you. Learn to find your fulfillment in pleasing God and in manifesting the fullness of what he's put and purpose for your life. And then believe God to send the right man alongside you that can accentuate. But never live your life in a position where you need a man. Toshiba, Toshiba easily. This is everything I needed to hear. So thankful I stumbled upon you today. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Never, never work from a place of, I don't know what I'm going to do if I don't have a man. Never. You're going to live. You're going to thrive. You're going to succeed. You're going to bless and empower others. 
you're going to leave your mark on the planet. And when you live from that posture, now what happens is you leave space for God to bring into your life the one he's prepared for you. See, because as long as you're desperate and you got, I got to have a man, what's going to happen is you're going to keep filling your life up with the wrong man. And every time the right man passes by, your life will be preoccupied with the wrong man. And then every time you get rid of the wrong man, you will always say, I don't know why I can't find a good man. The good man kept passing by, but the space was always filled because you were not patient enough to wait. Queens will wait. And so that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. I pray that you got something out of it. Now, let me say this to you. Let me say this to you. Don't forget to stop by rcblakes.com and check out my online programs. Alicia, thank you. Alicia Clark, thank you so much. Don't forget to stop by and check out my online programs. Kingology is available. Amazon, Queenology, Soul Ties, Imperfectly Holy, um, whatever other books I got, they're all there at Amazon. And also for those of you, listen to me very well. I haven't talked about this in a while, but it's important. For those of you who are struggling with any kind of an emotional issue and you need a therapist, and you know with this quarantine thing, it's not like we just get up and go run wherever we want to go. There's a, there's a counseling service that I that sponsors me and I partnered with called BetterHelp. And I'm going to put a link in the description. It's affordable and it's something you can do on the phone from your house. Thank you, Joe, where you can have the necessary conversation with a license, with a professional counselor. I'm gonna put the link in the description. You're sitting there, you're depressed, you just got all of this stuff going on in your mind, you need someone to talk to. Better help. This is a counseling service that can help you. It'll be in my description. I love you all. I thank you so much for giving me your time. And don't be surprised if I don't come back here tomorrow night. I enjoy talking with you all. Not a part two of this, though. We may talk about something else. We may talk about kingology or something. But I love you. Um, and just know that, that Lisa and I are here for you. Reach out to us at pastorrcblakes at gmail.com. And um, I know I'm forgetting something, but I love y'all. Have a great night. I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.